Hello everyone, and welcome back to Rewilding the Future. Today, we travel back thousands of years to a time when the kings of two worlds, the lion and the tiger, roamed the same continent. Their territories once brushed against each other across the wild lands of Eastern Europe and Asia. These encounters were rare, silent, and filled with tension. Two apex predators sharing a border, testing each other's strength without ever truly conquering one another. Long before modern boundaries, the landscapes stretching from the Balkans and the Caucasus through Persia to Central Asia were home to both lions, Panthera leo persica, and tigers, Panthera tigris tigris. The climate then was milder, and the land was a patchwork of forests, reed beds, and dry plains. Lions came from the west, spreading from southeastern Europe through Anatolia and into Iran. Tigers came from the east, following the great river systems of Central Asia, the Amu Darya, Sir Darya, and Volga. In these zones of overlap, the lion's open savannas met the tiger's shadowed forests. Fossils and ancient accounts confirm that both species lived within a few hundred kilometers of each other in places like the Caspian Lowlands, the Transcaucasus, and northern India. It was not Africa. It was not the jungles of Southeast Asia. It was a meeting ground between two empires of muscle and instinct. When lions and tigers encountered one another, they did not rush to fight. Both were dominant predators, and both understood the cost of injury. Instead, they relied on intimidation, scent marking, roaring, and posturing. The tiger, solitary and silent, would avoid confrontation whenever possible, slipping through reeds or dense shrubs to disappear. The lion, more vocal and accustomed to the support of a pride, would defend open ground with deep roars and visual displays. Their contact zones created invisible borders. Lions hunted gazelles, deer, wild boar, buffalo, bison, onagers, and wild cattle on the plains, while tigers stalked deer, boar, and buffalo in the forests. Only in droughts or along narrow river valleys would their paths truly cross. When that happened, both species likely circled each other at a distance, one testing, the other watching, before retreating. It was not friendship, but it was not open war either. It was coexistence born of mutual respect. If a lion and a tiger were to meet today in the wild, the encounter would unfold much the same way. First would come the silence, the realization that another predator stands nearby, then the sounds, deep growls, tails flicking, muscles tightening. If escape is possible, one will simply leave. Neither species wants to risk crippling wounds that could end its life. But if forced to fight over food, territory, or a trapped path, the outcome would depend on setting and individual strength. In a dense forest, the tiger's stealth and speed would give it the edge. In open grassland, the lion's endurance and defensive stance, protected by its mane, could turn the tables. Most wildlife experts agree that in one-on-one -on -one fights, tigers win more often, but in natural conditions, such clashes would almost never occur. These cats evolved to avoid each other, not destroy one another. In recent years, many videos have appeared online showing lions and tigers forced to fight each other in cages or arenas. These scenes are often presented as epic battles, but the truth is far darker. They are acts of abuse and cruelty, not examples of natural behavior. In the wild, lions and tigers would almost never fight like this. They evolved to avoid conflict, to maintain balance and survival. But in captivity, trapped and stressed, they are provoked by humans for money, attention, and spectacle. These so-called lion versus tiger fights are staged. The animals are starved, confined, and pushed into violence they would never choose. The outcome is always the same, deep wounds, trauma, and sometimes death. These videos distort reality and betray the dignity of two of nature's most majestic species. They teach fear instead of respect, cruelty 
instead of coexistence. Real rewilding is not about making predators fight, it's about restoring the freedom they lost, the forests, the plains, and the peace that allows them to live as they once did. The lion and the tiger are symbols of power and grace, and their true strength lies not in fighting, but in surviving, adapting, and reminding us what wildness really means. In the wild, true battles between lions and tigers were extraordinarily rare, yet competition certainly existed wherever their worlds brushed together. Across the Caspian Plains, northern India, and Iran, both cats hunted overlapping prey, deer, wild boar, antelope, and wild cattle, but they usually partitioned the landscape to avoid costly conflict. Lions, social and vocal, held the open country, dry grasslands, stony ridges and broad valleys, while tigers, solitary and silent, ruled the forests, wetlands, and reed-choked river corridors. In good years, this separation was enough. Each species followed its preferred hunting style and prey, and encounters remained indirect. But during harsh winters, droughts, or famine years, when herds thinned and waterholes drew every creature to the same shrinking veins of habitat, the boundary blurred. A tiger might track boar down a riverbed into lion range. A pride might drift to a forest edge to test a striped rival's fresh kill. Even then, the contest was mostly invisible. Scent posts, tree scratches, flame and responses, roars rolling over distance, and the sudden hush that signals a calculated retreat. A tiger would yield to multiple lions on open ground. A lone lion would think twice before stepping into cover where the tiger's ambush is law. Ancient hunters in Persia and India hinted at this code. Both species knew their limits, patrolling invisible borders that shifted with season and prey. Did lions and tigers ever truly fight in the wild? Almost never. And when it happened, it was brief, situational, and resolved before bloodshed whenever possible. Along old contact zones in Persia, the Caucasus, and northern India, a hungry tiger might emerge from reeds, or a lion might shadow migrating antelope toward a riverbank. First came the ritual. Low growls, tail lashes, ears flattened, parallel walking, and bluff charges. The tiger's calculus favored a quick, decisive strike only if escape was impossible. The lions favored holding ground, especially with allies nearby, behind a thick mane that offers some protection in frontal clashes. Most encounters ended the same way. One animal backed off, preserving its life over its pride. There are no verified historical accounts of prolonged set-piece battles in nature. What survived instead are place names, passing notes, and myths that human imagination later inflated into duels of kings. In reality, forests belonged to the tiger, plains to the lion, and between them stretched a narrow belt of ecological diplomacy that lasted thousands of years. Two apex predators measuring each other from a distance, then turning away with the quiet respect of survivors. Throughout history, lions and tigers have interbred in captivity, producing hybrids called ligers, lion father, tiger mother, and tigons, tiger father, lion mother. These offspring can be massive, combining features of both parents. Yet there is no evidence that wild hybrids ever existed. In nature, lions and tigers lived in different habitats and had different mating systems. Tigers are solitary and meet only to mate, while lions live in social prides. Their courtship behaviors and breeding seasons rarely aligned. Even in overlap zones like the Caspian Plains or northern India, the two species kept to themselves. Hybrids, if ever born, would have been extremely rare and unlikely to survive without the protection of captivity. So, the liger remains a symbol of what humans can create, not what nature ever allowed. As humans spread across Eurasia, the quiet balance between lions and tigers vanished. Overhunting, deforestation, and settlement destroyed their shared landscapes. The last Asiatic lions disappeared from Iran and Mesopotamia by the early 1900s, surviving only in India's Gir Forest. 
the Caspian tiger, once stalking the reed beds of Central Asia, was wiped out by the 1950s. The roar that once echoed across the Eurasian plains fell silent. What was once a natural boundary between two apex predators became farmland, railways, and cities. Today, conservationists dream of bringing these ancient predators back, not to fight, but to restore lost ecosystems. The rewilding of lions and tigers in suitable areas of Western and Central Asia has been discussed in theory. The Caspian tiger's closest relative, the Amur tiger, returned to Kazakhstan and could return to the Caucasus, West Asia, and East Europe, where reed beds and deer populations are being restored. Asiatic lions might one day reclaim parts of West Asia, the Caucasus, and Europe in protected reserves if conditions allow. Imagine it, the tiger's shadow moving through willow forests, the lions roar across the plains, not as rivals, but as distant neighbors once more. Their coexistence could revive ecological processes, controlling herbivore numbers, reshaping vegetation, and restoring the natural rhythm of predation that defined ancient Eurasia. The story of lions and tigers in Europe and Asia is not one of battle, but of balance. They shared the same world without destroying it. Their relationship teaches us that even the mightiest predators know restraint and that the natural world thrives not through dominance, but through coexistence. Their roars may have faded, but their memory lingers in fossils, myths, and the genes of modern populations. Rewilding them is not just about returning two great cats. It is about restoring the harmony between strength and space, between forest and plain, between East and West. And that's all for today's episode of Rewilding the Future. If you enjoyed this journey into the forgotten encounters of lions and tigers, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Would you support the rewilding of these two legendary species in Eurasia? Until next time, keep exploring, keep rewilding, and keep the wild alive.